Did you know that one of the most produced planes in history was a World War II biplane? Hello you fine folks, today we're talking about biplanes of the Second World War. When we think of aerial combat in World War II, our minds usually jump to such legends as the P-51, the Spitfire, the BF-109, and various other such monoplane rulers of the sky. Because everyone knows that with the rise of World War II, the age of the biplane was over. The time of the monoplane has come. But not so fast there, Gothmog. The 1930s may have seen the new reign of the monoplane, but biplanes were still used and produced in considerable numbers during World War II. Despite becoming outdated, biplanes still had their uses. They were more maneuverable, easier to pilot, durable, simpler to maintain, and they had added lift that made them ideal for shipborne operations. World War II was a transitional period where it became obvious that the biplane was now obsolete, but this style of aircraft was still fresh in the world's mind. Pre-war models were still around in significant numbers, and some were even still being produced, so it made sense to just put them to work. You could draw a similar comparison to the role of cavalry in World War I. The battlefield had changed, and your traditional cavalry charge was all but useless, but there were still some roles and circumstances throughout the Great War that cavalry could serve in. With all that being said, both the Allied and Axis powers used various biplanes for training, scouting, and even combat. In fact, the list I'm going to cover today barely scratches the surface of biplane use during the war, and it's just going to give you an idea of what was being operated at the time. I opted not to include any planes on this list that were only used as trainers, of which there were many, but focused instead on biplanes that served in active duty roles to some capacity at least. So join me, and we will explore eight of the most noteworthy biplanes that served during World War II. The first plane on our list is the chunky little Polykarpov I-15. The I-15 was a Soviet fighter that was first introduced in 1934 and produced until early 1939. It found its fame during the Spanish Civil War, where it was supplied to the Republicans by the Soviet Union. Even in a war where the BF-109 was being fielded, the I-15 still proved a reliable and competent plane, earning the nickname Chato, or Snub Nose, from the Spanish. The Russians called it Chaika, meaning seagull, due to its gull-shaped wings. The I-15 was also used by China and Mongolia in their early conflicts with the Japanese, and the Soviets notably used them in the Winter War against Finland. Over 3,000 I-15s were produced, and when Germany invaded Russia in 1941, the Soviets still employed more than a thousand of them. The most common model was the I-15 BIS, which was armed with four 7.62mm machine guns and could carry 330 pounds of bombs. It could even be fitted with six unguided rockets, making for a dangerous little biplane. While it was designated a fighter, these armaments allowed it to perform well as a ground attack plane. Despite its early success, the I-15 was a bit late for its time, and by 1942 it was relegated to second-line duties. Our second entry is another Soviet plane, the Polykarpov PO-2. The PO-2 holds the record for being the most produced biplane in the world, with estimates ranging from 20,000 to 40,000 being built. This range means it could take second place as the world's most produced aircraft right behind the Cessna 172, but at the very least it ranks in the top 10. The PO-2 was produced from 1928 until as late as 1959, and it saw plenty of action during World War II. It was designated the U-2 for most of the war, but was renamed the PO-2 in 1944 after the death of its designer, Nikolai Polykarpov. The PO-2 is perhaps most famous for being the aircraft used by the Night Witches. The Night Witches, so nicknamed by the Germans that they terrorized, was a Soviet flying unit composed entirely of women. These pilots would fly endless night sorties against German positions, constantly peppering them with bombs in order to prevent sleep. This unit would fly as many as 15 missions every night, and many of the pilots flew over 1,000 sorties during the war. Many PO2s were used as trainer aircraft, but the combat variants were fitted with a single machine gun and could carry six 110-pound bombs. These planes had a top speed of only around 90 miles per hour, which plummeted to about 60 miles per hour when fully loaded. However, this agonizing pace actually served as something of a defense against enemy fighters. Most German fighters would stall at this speed, meaning they would usually overshoot and not be able to stay behind a PO2, thus cutting short their firing opportunity. Our number three is a German design and was the last biplane to be adopted into service with the Luftwaffe, the Henschel HS-123. 
The HS-123 was one of Henschel's first aircraft designs, and it was produced to satisfy the role of a dive bomber. This biplane was introduced in 1936, and it was combat tested during the Spanish Civil War. It was received favorably by the Spanish, and a revised variant was even planned, but the appearance of a certain Ju-87 Stuka in 1937 pushed aside all further development of the HS-123. Nevertheless, when Germany began its invasion of Poland in 1939, a smattering of these biplanes were committed to the front lines for precision attacks. Aside from two 7.92mm machine guns, the HS-123 could carry nearly 1,000 pounds of bombs, and it surprised German commanders with its effectiveness. It earned a place in the continued Blitzkrieg campaign, and eventually was even used in the Eastern Front. This plane proved both durable and easy to maintain, and it reliably served in the close air support role for most of the war. The Germans had considered the plane obsolete in as early as 1937, but when 1943 rolled around, General Oberst Wolfram von Richthofen, cousin of the Red Baron, asked if production of the HS-123 could be resumed. However, the equipment for its assembly was already dismantled, and after its final service in the Battle of Kursk in 1944, the HS-123 was retired from frontline duty. For our next entry, we're going to look at a Japanese biplane, the Yokosuka B-4Y. The B-4Y was built to meet the requirement for a new carrier-based torpedo bomber, and it succeeded the unimpressive B-3Y. This torpedo bomber was manned by a crew of three, a pilot in the open cockpit, and a navigator and gunner in an enclosed rear cockpit. Full production of this aircraft began in 1937, and while it only had a single rear-facing machine gun, it could carry either a 1,700-plus pound torpedo or 1,100 pounds of smaller bombs. The B-4Y saw much of its action in the conflict with China, and by the time the U.S. entered the war, it was very near the end of its frontline service. It did, however, serve during the Battle of Midway in 1942, and eight B-4Ys operated from the carrier Hosho. At this time, the B-4Y was being replaced by the more capable B-5N Kate, and it became a trainer until it was fully retired by 1944. In honor of General MacArthur's wife, the Allied designation for the B-4Y was Jean. Our number 5 is America's entry on this list, the Curtis SOC Seagull. Although the Seagull didn't serve in massive numbers, it served in the important role of a shipborne scout plane. And by shipborne, I don't mean carriers. The Seagull was operated by battleships and cruisers for artillery spotting duties, and it was launched via catapult. The extra lift of a biplane was ideal for this function, even if biplanes were otherwise becoming obsolete. The Seagull is one of the few planes on this list that wasn't strictly a combat aircraft, but served as the eyes of the Navy in a war where engagements could be beyond visual range. The Seagull was overshadowed by the much more successful Vought Kingfisher, for which I recently made a video, but the Kingfisher was a monoplane, so that's basically cheating. The Seagull was actually meant to be replaced by the SO3C Seamew, but that particular aircraft was considered a dismal failure, and the Seagull had to be pulled back into frontline service halfway through the war. And replacing your own replacement is one of the most gangster things I've ever heard. While the Seagull was still a seaplane, it could have its float swapped out for a wheeled undercarriage, allowing it to serve as a traditional carrier or land-based plane. It was not particularly well suited for a fight, but it was still armed with two 30 cal Browning machine guns, and could also carry two small bombs or depth charges. Next up we have a plane that was never designed for combat, but dang it if the British didn't care, the de Havilland Tiger Moth. The Tiger Moth was the plane equivalent of a 12-year-old boy that was handed a rifle and told to get ready to fight off the Nazis. This plane was designed as a trainer aircraft, and after its introduction in 1932, Britain adopted it as its primary trainer. Nearly 9,000 Tiger Moths were produced, and they were delivered to more than 25 other air forces for service. While it served marvelously as a trainer, Britain was understandably fearful of an invasion in the early stages of World War II. At the end of 1939, the Brits were dealing with a shortage of aircraft, and they ended up roping the Tiger Moth into additional service roles. The German U-boat threat was looming over the British Isles, and the Tiger Moth was employed in scarecrow patrols along the coast to deal with this problem. These patrols were able to summon other friendly forces to deal with U-boats, causing U-boats to submerge merely by the presence of the weaponless Tiger Moths. Now, I say weaponless, but technically each pilot had a flare gun and two carrier pigeons on board, so... Yep. Some Tiger Moths were actually fitted as light bombers or poison gas crop dusters for homeland defense, but these never had to be used. The Brits even went so far as developing a scythe attachment that would let Tiger Moths slice through the cords of enemy parachutes. Them Brits weren't messing around, let me tell ya. Our number 7 is another British plane, which served with great distinction, the Fairy Swordfish. 
The Swordfish entered service with the Fleet Air Arm in 1936, and it was retired shortly after VE Day in 1945. It was designed as a reconnaissance plane and torpedo bomber, and for almost a two-year period early in the war, it was the Fleet Air Arm's only torpedo bomber. Almost 2,400 were produced during the war, and they served widely in naval operations. The Swordfish was designed for a three-man crew, a pilot, a gunner, and an observer, but the observer was often swapped for extra fuel space. It was fitted with a forward and a rear machine gun, and could also carry eight underwing rockets for additional functionality. However, for its primary function, it could carry a 1,670-pound torpedo, or a 1,500-pound mine or 1,500 pounds of bombs. The Swordfish is famous for contributing to the destruction of the German battleship Bismarck. On May 26, 1941, the British were scrambling to attack the Bismarck before it could slip away to the protection of the Luftwaffe in France. Several Swordfish bravely endured the anti-aircraft guns of the Bismarck to make multiple hits with torpedoes, including one that damaged its rudder. The Bismarck was effectively disabled, allowing the Royal Navy to catch up and do battle with it. The Swordfish was a highly effective torpedo bomber, sinking more tonnage of Axis shipping than any other Allied plane. Our final entry on this list is the most produced Italian aircraft of World War II, the Fiat CR-42 Falco. The single-seat Falco was the successor to the outdated CR-32, and it served as Italy's primary fighter of the war. That's right, in the age of the Spitfire and the BF-109, the main Italian fighter was a biplane. Although technically the Falco was a sesquiplane, which is a biplane that has one wing noticeably smaller than the other, kind of like Nemo. The Falco entered service in 1939, and it saw most of its action over France and the Mediterranean. The most well-armed Falco variant featured four 12.7mm machine guns and a bomb load of 440 pounds, giving it some fairly serious teeth for a biplane. It had a respectable top speed of 267 miles per hour, and it was known to be quite maneuverable. Some Falcos were even modified to serve as night fighters, a role in which they found some success. Over 1,800 Falcos were produced over the course of the war, and some even served in the Luftwaffe. And that concludes our exploration of some of the most important biplanes of World War II. See, like I wasn't kidding, they were actually used quite a bit, and quite effectively in some cases. Feel free to comment below any plane you think I should have included on this list, and let me know what your favorite World War II biplane is. If you're looking for more World War II plane content, try out my video on the most bizarre planes of World War II, or click here for some random video. If this video is worth your time, please don't forget to like and do the subscribe so you stay tuned for all future vids. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ruibas out.